Yes. So we'll have Tekla speak first, then Judy Hanazawa. So, good afternoon, Dian, family members, and relatives, and friends of Texu. It's really a great honor and privilege for me to have the fate to get to know and work with Texu. Texu is a true humanist and human rights activist. I visited Texu a few days before he passed away. He was still very clear minded and even asked his daughter to take out the book that I gave him 25 years ago. The book is entitled The Rape of Nanking An Undeniable History in Photographs. We both treasured the works we have been doing for historical truth and justice for the Asian Holocaust victims since 1997. Two days ago, I had a chance to talk to a Dutch survivor, Madame Marine, Mariam Van Zien. She is now 85 years old and living in Bright Rock. As a survivor of the Japanese concentration camps in the Dutch East Indies, now Indonesia, she established an organization called the August 15, 1945 Foundation. This organization served as a support group for the Dutch victims who immigrated in Canada. She earnestly asked me to convey her deep gratitude to Taksu for his unfaltering support for the redress movement of the Asian Holocaust victims, including members of her group. I wrote a very short tribute when Taksu passed away in January. <coughs> I would like to read it out now. As I'm looking at a 2003 group photo placed on my desk, all memories about my encounters with Taksu over the last 25 years just keep flying back. Supposedly, the photo should be projected there so you can see the photo. Anyway, in this photo, Taksu was standing beside me. Together with us were a comfort woman survivor from Korea, a German warfare victim from China, the late Iris Chang, author of the book The Rape of Nanking, The Forgotten Holocaust of World War II, and a few others who were either organizers or speakers of the Canadian Conference on Preventing Crimes Against Humanity, Lessons from the Asia Pacific War. This conference was held in UBC with the support of three departments of this university, including the First Nations House of Learning, Women's Studies and Gender Relations, and the International House. Taksu, you as a staunch supporter of the redress movement of victims of atrocities committed by the Imperial Japanese forces, have been under great pressure from not only individuals from your, within your own community, but even from the Japanese consulate in Vancouver. Just now, Andy, Randy, yeah, Randy <coughs> mentioned it. And uh, you have deeply impressed me with your extraordinary and unshakable resilience in upholding the principles of human rights for all. You didn't succumb to such pressure, but kept continuing the work for justice and reconciliation. Recently, I have experience of being criticized as anti-China due to my support for Uyghur's human rights and Hong Kong's struggle for freedom and democracy. I'm of Chinese descent. In fact, I only denounce and condemn the human rights violations committed by the authoritarian Chinese Communist Party regime, not China, and of course, not the Chinese people. However, such experience has made me understand much, much better the impact of pressure, especially those from coming from one's own community. Fortunately, I can look up to you, Texu, as my role model when facing such challenges. Thank you, Texu, and may you rest in peace.